Okay guys, so we're back to the second part of our discussion. So we'll cover the different um, enzymes, ASP, ALP, ACP, ALP, GGD, G6PD, okay, uh, and the other clinically significant enzymes. Okay, so let's start with ASP. Okay, guys, take note, the ASP has other name which is the... This one, serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase. So that is also known as the AST or the SGOT or the GOT. Okay? So unlike for ALT, that is also known as the SGPT. So, paano mo tatandaan na si AST is the SGOT? Okay? So, meron akong ano dyan? Technique. Okay? May pinagbabawal na technique. Char. So, let's change to paint. Okay? So, na-paste ko na siya. So, going back, ang sabi natin, si EST is also known as the SGOT or the GOT. Okay? So, you got an us. Okay? You got us. Okay? Char, o, alam niyo ang pagkakaiba ng us at saka but. Okay? So, you got us. Okay? But instead of double S, that is double T. So, GOT is the same with AST. You got us. Okay? You got us. Meron ba? Meron ba talaga? So, huwag niyo kakalimutan. SGOT is the same as AST. Because, I remember, um, during the review for the board examination, Lagi nila tong ina-emphasize because uh, historically it was as in the board exam for several times already. Okay? So, balik tayo sa ating PowerPoint presentation. So, guys, as is not a... Uh, I will explain again as. So, there is a bad term, Okay? But, when you look at the definition, it refers to the but. Okay? So, medically speaking, hindi naman tayo nagmumura. Okay? Or, wala, wala naman tayong maling ginagawa ngayon. So, enzyme belonging to the class of transferase together with the ALT. So, it is commonly referred to as the transaminase and is involved in the transfer of amino group between the aspartate and alpha keto acid. So, that is its function. It is widely distributed, okay? Therefore, most likely, it is not specific, okay? Because enzymes are not really specific, okay? Because they are found in many organs and in many cells in the body. So, an elevation of an enzyme doesn't mean, okay, it doesn't guarantee na meron ka ng particular disorder, okay? So, several workups must be done to identify the source of the increased level. Okay? So, if because an increased level means that there is, okay, tissue damage. Okay? Tissue damage, pwede namang meron ding necrosis or carcinoma. Okay? So, going back to ASD, that is widely distributed with the highest concentration sa heart, sa liver, at saka sa muscle. And smaller amounts are found in the kidney, pancreas, at saka sa red blood cell. So, um, its diagnostic significance it is that it is mainly limited to the evaluation of hepatocellular disorder. Okay? Or liver disorder involving B cells, hepatocellular disorder, as well as skeletal muscle involvement. Okay? Even in acute myocardial infarction. But guys, again, these are not commonly measured already nowadays because we have the more sensitive and more specific troponin. So, if you remember, CAL, creatinine first, EST second, BLAST is the LDH. So, EST begin to rise in acute myocardial infarction, okay, or the onset of heart attack in 6 to 8 hours. How about C? CK, that is 4 to 8. So, mas maaga si CK followed by EST. Peak at 24 hours. How about si CK, guys? It is 12 to 24. 
and nagpipik naman si LDH at saan kailan siya nagpipik? Okay, 48 to 72 hours. Tama ba? So, balikan nyo na lang. Pero feeling ko tama naman. And it normalized within uh, within 5 days. Okay? So, that is for AST. So, huwag nyo makakalimutan yung pag nila. So, elevations are found in pulmonary embolism. Okay? As well as after congestive heart failure. So, ESD levels are highest in acute hepatocellular disorder. How about si CK? Saan siya pinakamataas? Anong level? Sa uh, what this is causes the highest degree of elevation for CK, guys? Okay, si Duchenne, di ba? Duchenne muscular dystrophy. How about si uh, LDH? Highest elevations are seen in pernicious anemia and hemolytic disorder. Diba? Tama ba? Okay. So, in EST naman, highest elevation involves acute hepatocellular disorders. In, in viral hepatitis, levels may reach 100 times the upper limit of normal. Okay? So, guys, uh... It's really noisy in the background because I am in Lecaros and you know that there is a construction going on beside us. Okay, because of the condo. Okay, the condominium. So, medyo maingay. Skeletal muscle disorders and inflammatory conditions also increases in ASD level. Okay, so for the part 1, medyo mahina yung bosses ko because um, nasa bahay ako when I recorded that. Okay, and medyo natutulog na sila. Okay? So, ASTSGOT isoenzyme. So, there are two isoenzymes, guys. So, one is located in the cell cytoplasm and the other is in mitochondria. Inside the cell, okay, so the level of the AST inside as compared to the outside is 7,000 times higher. Okay, so ganun ka grabe yung difference when it comes to the level of AST when that is inside in the cell as compared to the outside. Okay, so ibig sabihin, if a cell is damaged, kung nasirang isang cell, can you imagine the level of AST that would enter the circulation? Okay, so it would be elevated significantly because the level of the um, ASC inside is a lot higher as compared to the level outside. Okay? So, in disorders producing cellular necrosis, the mitochondrial form may be significantly increased. So, we have here, guys, the time course of elevation for acute myocardial infarction. Again, CK first is elevated first, followed by ASC, and lastly by LDH. Okay? So, guys, as you can see, we have here the highest degree of elevation is produced also by the CK, which is up to 6 to 10 times the upper limit of normal as compared to AST and LDH, wherein they can only increase up to 3 times the upper limit of normal. Okay, so, pwede silang tumaas lang ng times 3 ng kanilang preference range. Unlike kay CK na that could be Increase by 6 to 10 times of the upper limit of normal. Again, ano yung upper limit of normal? The highest value of the reference range. Okay? So, that is the upper limit of normal. Okay, we proceed with the other transferase. So, the alanine amino transferase, also known as the serum glutam glutamic pyruvic transaminase. So, or the SGPT, okay? Ma'am, paano namin ito tatandaan? Okay? So, we have here, hindi kasi siya ganun ka kaganda. Hindi naman sa tao, yung quality ng picture. So, this is Alan K, okay? So, this is Alan K. So, remember the name. AL for Alan. GPT. GPT for ALT. For AL. Okay? So, gipit. Kung ikaw ay gipit kay Alan Kakapit. Okay, char. Okay? So, I hope you can remember those guys. So, yung kakalimutan that 
the EL, okay, kung ka ikaw ay dipet kay Alan kakapit, okay? So, GPT for ELT, EST for DGOT, okay? You got an S for EST, okay? So, I hope you then, you don't forget that kasi pinagiraban ko pang maganap ng picture ni Alan kay sa internet, okay? So, Specifically, it catalyzes the transfer of an amino group from alanine to alpha-ketoglutarate with the formation of glutamate and the pyruvate. So that is its um, function when it comes to chemical reaction. So ALT together with ESDDR, widely distributed, but it has comparatively high concentration in the liver as compared to ASD. That's why the ALT, okay, AST and ALT, they increase both in um, in disorders of the liver. However, higher concentrations are observed in ELT, okay? And the ELT is more liver-specific. Ma'am, paano namin tatandaan na mas liver-specific si ELT kaysa kay AST? Si ELT, meron siyang L. So, L, liver. It is more liver-specific, okay? So, ELT is more liver-specific than ASD. So, I hope, guys, that that is clear. Diagnostic significance, ALT are confined mainly to the elevation of hepatic disorder. Okay? So, they are mostly tested to assess the level or to assess hepatic damage. Okay? Nakukuha ba? Okay. So, proceed na tayo sa next. Again, guys, ha? D, do not forget pala that clinical applications of ELT assays are confined mainly to the evaluation of hepatic disorder. So mostly, if these are requested in laboratories, it is for the assessment of hepatic disorder. Okay? So elevations. Higher elevations are found in hepatocellular disorders than in extrahepatic or intrahepatic obstructive disorders. Same with EST. Okay? So, higher elevations in hepatocellular. In acute inflammatory conditions of the liver, ELD elevations are frequently higher than those of EST and tend to remain longer. Okay? So, that's why this is more specific. Because um, when there's liver damage, the concentration increases more, okay? Higher elevation for ELT, and the elevation remains longer as compared to the elevation that is seen in the AST. Mas matagal nagpo-persist yung mataas na level ng ELT kaysa kay AST if there is liver damage, okay? So, I hope that is clear. Okay, so we proceed with the next. Um, enzyme, the ALP, alkaline phosphatase. So, see, AST and, um, both AST and ALT, these are transferase. For ALP, alkaline phosphatase and acid phosphatase, these are phosphatase. Okay? So, phosphatase sila. So, it catalyzes the hydrolysis of various phosphomonoesters at alkaline pH. Unlike si acid phosphatase, the reaction is the same. It catalyzes the hydrolysis of various phosphomonoester, but it happens in acidic environment or acidic pH. Okay, ALP that is non-specific, which is capable of reacting with many different substrate. If ALP can react with many different substrate, what model does it follow? Is it lock and key or induced fit model, guys? Okay, it's induced fit model. Bakit induced fit model? Because the induced fit model, okay, the active site is more flexible. Okay, so it can adjust its shape to the different different types of substrate. That's why it can accommodate more types of substrate. It can catalyze um, the reaction of more substrate. Kasi nga, it can change its shape. Okay para magkaroon sila ng chemical reaction or so that it can catalyze the chemical reaction for that particular substrate. Okay, guys, sino mas malaki, si enzyme or si substrate? The enzyme is larger than the substrate. Okay? Okuha. So, if you remember, di ba, meron tayong mga drawing na bilog 
And then, merong mga shape-shape doon na maliliit lang, which are the active site. Okay? Kaya mas malaki yung enzyme. ALP tissue source, okay, present in cell surfaces in most human tissue. Ouch. Sorry. Okay, highest concentration. Concentrations are found in the intestine, liver, bone, spleen, placenta, and the kidney. That's why there are isoenzymes na four. Okay, merong apat na main. Intestine, liver, bone, and C, placenta. Okay, so placenta, those are its isoenzymes. Okay, activity in bone is confined with osteoblasts. Unlike si ACP osteoclast, okay? So, osteoblast for ALP. So, those cells that are involved in the production of bone matrix. That's why, okay, destruction, if there is destruction or there are destruction in any type, okay, or in all of these organs or in any of these disorder organs, okay, possible na tumaas yung level ng ating ALP. Okay? Increased levels of ALP, the most diagnostic significance in the elevation of hepatobiliary and bone disorders. So, do you mean, ma'am, what is the difference between hepatobiliary and hepatocellular? Okay? In hepatocellular, it involves only the liver. Okay? Unlike in hepatobiliary, uh, it involves the liver and the biliary tract. Okay? Liver and the biliary tract. Okay? So, most significant elevation in hepatobiliary and in bone disorders, but more predominant in obstructive condition than the hepatocellular disorder. So, mas mataas siya pag may nangyayaring obstruction. Okay? Like biliary tract obstruction. So, in bone disorders, elevations are observed with the involvement of the osteoblasts, which are involved in the formation of the bone matrix. Okay? So, I hope, guys, you uh, you already have a hint on how do I give my exam or quizzes. Okay? So, hindi ko naman ito ibibigay. Uh, what enzyme is elevated if there is a, a significant destruction, okay, or wide destruction of the cell that forms the bone matrix of a human? Diba? So, hindi ko kasi binibigay lagi yung word na osteoblast or I do not directly uh, formulate my question from the uh, presentation that I gave you. Instead, ibibigay ko yung meaning. Okay? Kasi, ibig sabihin, kung hindi mo alam yun, yung meaning nun, yung word na yun, hindi mo rin siya naiintindihan. Okay? So, I hope, guys, if you cannot understand something, if there's a word here, hindi mo alam ang ibig sabihin, then you have to check for that in the internet. Sobrang dali lang naman. Diba? Pag tinatamad ka, okay, Google, what is? Okay? Sabihin mo lang kay Google, what is? Siya nang bahalang magbasa para sa'yo. Okay, increased levels of ELP, highest elevations of ELP, ELP activity occur in Paget's disease or the osteitis deformance. Okay, other bone disorders include, include osteomalacia, rickets, hyperparathyroidism, and osteogenic sarcoma. Okay? So, again, the highest elevation, Paget's disease. Increased levels are observed in healing bone fractures and during periods of physiologic bone growth. That's why in children, okay, or um, individuals in their puberty age, wherein there is an active division or an active production of bone cells, most likely the ALP is elevated even we when okay, win. okay even when there are healing bone fractures due to accident okay so may na accident nagkalasog lasog ang kanyang bones okay during the healing process or even okay or even when the um even after the the accident okay definitely tataas ang ELP because of the release and tissue destruction. So, tataas yung ELP. Even when the bones are already healing, mataas pa rin ang level ng ELP. Okay? Kayo, mataas pa ba ang ELP nyo? Wala na po, kasi hindi na siguro kayo. Wala na kayo sa period of physiologic bone growth. Okay? So, yung mga malaliit sa inyo, maliit na talaga. Okay? 
So, diagnostic significance in biliary tract obstruction, it can increase 3 to 10 times the upper limit normal. Okay? So, because of the degree of overlapping ELP elevations, a single elevated ELP level is difficult to interpret. Kasi nga, tumataas siya sa maraming disorders, in different types of disorders. So, it is not... Um, it is not conclusive for a particular disorder. Okay, so it assumes more diagnostic significance when evaluated along with other tests of hepatic function, kagaya na lang ni ALT. Okay, so how about guys, um, between ALT, diba, if you want to assess ALT, uh, bone disorder and hepatic disorder, okay, so, you measured ALP together with ALP. So, if in bone disorder, sino lang doon yung mataas? Si ALP lang. Okay? Pero kung liver siya, si ALP at saka si ALP, mataas sila pareho. Nakukuha. So, in normal pregnancy, increased ALP activity can be detected between 16 to 20 weeks and is... 2 to 3 times the upper limit normal during the third trimester. Okay? So, pag buntes, mataas ang ELP. Simple as that. Kasi, it persists until the third trimester. Doon na siya mga anak, di ba? So, from 16 until labor. Okay? Until mga anak, mataas yung ELP level. And activity returns within 3 to 6 days after mga anak ng isang individual. Okay? ELP is elevated also in the complications of pregnancy. Okay? So, pag nagka-hypertension habang nagbubuntis, pre-eclampsia and eclampsia as well as threatened abortion. Okay? So, pag nagpa-abort, okay, threatened abortion, trinay magpa-abort, the level of ELP also increases. How about in decreased levels of ELP? Minabadali ni ma'am. <laughs> Okay, decreased levels of ELP that is significantly decrease in the inherited condition of hypophosphatasia. Why guys? Why is it decrease in hy hypophosphatasia? Okay, because of course phosphorus is also needed for bone. Okay, for the making of the bone or for the bone synthesis. So without this one, low levels of phosphate would also mean low levels of synthesis or a uh, decreased synthesis of bone cells. So, ano mangyayari? Bababa yung level ng ating ELP. Ay, so, enzymes of ELP, we have the blip. Okay? Ang bakit blip? B. Let's start with the bone, liver, intestine, and placenta. Okay? So, blip. Those are the isoenzymes of ELP. Intestinal ELP, its presence in the, its presence in the serum depends on the blood group and the secretor status. Okay? So, mas madaas ang level kapag type B, type O, at saka mga secretors. Okay? So, bound by RBC of group A. So, the intestinal ALP. We are referring to intestinal ALP here, guys, ha? So, that is, uh, the intestinal ALP for blood type A group, okay? So, those are bound to their... RBC and it increases only after the consumption of a fatty meal. Okay, but that's not important. Don't keep it into the in your outline. Okay, yung ano, it increases after ano, eating fatty meal. Bone ELP it increases due to the osteoblastic activity and is normally elevated in children. So yung tumataas pala na level ng ELP. Okay. Uh, in periods of physiologic growth, that is considered as the isoenzyme of the, uh, the bone isoenzyme. Okay? So, intestinal ALP, bumali, may increase in several disorders such as diseases of the digestive tract and cirrhosis, as well as in patients undergo undergoing chronic hemodialysis. Okay? So, that's for intestinal ALP. We also have uh, there is also the carcinoplacental ALPs. Ma'am, why are they termed as carcinoplacental? Because they resemble the placental isoenzyme. Okay? 
they resemble the placental isoenzyme. And these fractions are associated with neoplasm sa mga cancer, kaya siya carcino. Okay? Carcino placental ELT. We have two. Okay? There are two pala. Mahilig ako sa we. Okay? There are two. Okay? Regan isoenzyme and nagaw. I, I find these terms also interesting. Regan and nagaw. Diba? So, pwede yung pangalan yun sa mga magiging anak nyo. Regan, nagaw enzyme. So, but those are carcinoplacental enzymes of the ALT. The Regan, that is characterized as an example of ectopic production of an enzyme by malignant tissue. Okay? So, it is detected in virus carcinoma in lung, breast, ovarian, colon, and with highest incidences in ovarian and gynecologic cancers. Okay? So, it is useful in monitoring the effects of therapy. Bakit siya useful? Because, okay, it will disappear on successful treatment. Vegan isoenzyme, if that is present, um, it will, okay, it will disappear kapag naging successful na yung treatment for that particular cancer. Okay, so huwag nyo na itong ano, isama. Kamawa naman kayo, ang dami-dami na. Okay. So, ito. Huwag nyo isama niya eh. Adware is the nagaw enzyme. It is detected. It is detected in metastatic carcinoma of pleural surfaces and in adenocarcinoma of the pancreas and in the bile duct. So, that is for the nagaw enzyme. Two carcinoplacental, huwigan, and nagaw. Okay, acid phosphatase, acid, DSP, sabi ko nga sa inyo. Okay, so it catalyzes the same type of reaction like the ALP, but their difference is the pH where the reaction happens. For ACP, the optimal pH, it happens in the pH of 5. Okay, pH of 5. Si ALP kasi walang binanggit si uh, Bishop. So, tissue source, tissue location, or tissue source, okay, prostate, bone, spleen, kidney, red blood cell, and platelets. Take note, guys, I, I, ano, um, I bold the prostate, prostate, tissue location of the ACP because the diagnostic significance of ACP is mostly useful or associated with prostatic carcinoma. Okay? So, diagnostic significance historically measured in an aid with the detection of prostatic carcinoma. Ma'am, historically, yes po. Dati yan, hindi na ngayon. Okay? Parang kayo ng ex niya. Char! Okay? So, his historically, it was measured for the detection of prostatic carcinoma. However, okay, there is more um... Um, they found another uh, substance which uh, which likely increases more at times of prostatic carcinoma as compared to ACP. That is the PSA. And PSA stands for the Philippine Statistics Authority. <laughs> Joke lang. PSA that is prostate-specific antigen. Okay? Which is more likely than ACP to be elevated at each state of prostatic carcinoma. That's why it is more, is it sensitive or specific? It is more sensitive. Kasi it detects true positive. Kaya nga, tumataas siya every stage. Kung tumataas, meron, di ba? So, positive siya for that particular disorder. So, this is more sensitive. Okay? Sensitive. As compared kay ACP. Kagaya din ni, um, kagaya din ng mga troponins, di ba? For acute myocardial uh, infarction, more sensitive and more specific ang ating troponin as compared to the use of CK, ASP, and LDH. Okay. So, in ECP, in hyperplasia of the prostate and prostatic surgery, ACP levels are elevated. Okay? So, kapag dumadami yung cells, hyperplasia, okay? Pag naririnig nyo ang hyperplasia, dumadami yung cells, kagaya na lang sa mga tumors, ba Sa mga cancer, 
Those are hyperplasia. Okay? As well as in prostatic surgery, nagkakaroon ng elevation of the ACP. Elevations have been noted also in Paget's disease. So, if you remember, highest elevation of ALP is in, uh, seen in Paget's disease. Okay? But that is also elevated in ACP. Um, yes, in Paget's disease, ACP is also elevated as well as in breast cancer. Okay? Breast cancer with bone metastasis. Okay, so breast cancer that involves bone metastasis and in Goucher's disease. Again, Goucher and on Goucher. Okay, in which there is an infiltration of bone marrow and other tissue by Goucher cells rich in acid phos uh, rich in the ACP, the acid phosphatase. Okay, so Goucher cell ACP. The Goucher cell is high level of ACP activity. Elevations also, thrombocytopenia resulting from excessive platelet destruction from idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. Okay? Purpura, that is ITP. Okay, this is ITP. So, you will discuss this on HEMA 2. Nakakahima tayo, level 2.0. Okay? So, sana marami kayong natututunan. So, if you remember, ACP, that is, um, ACP is also located in platelets. That's why, destruction of the platelet would increase the level of ACP. Kagaya ng sa idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. Bakit nagkakaroon ng thrombocytopenia? What do you mean by thrombocytopenia? Low level of platelet because thrombo ay Platelets, other term for them, are the thrombocytes. So, low level of platelets occurs because of platelet destruction. Okay? So, nasisira yung platelet, nare-release yung ACP, tumataas yung ACP. Hope that is clear. Elevations of ACP. ACP assays have proved useful in forensic clinical chemistry. Okay? Paano siya naging useful in forensic clinical chemistry? Particularly in the investigation of rape. Okay? Rape, guys. Rape. Huwag niyong kakalimutan. This is very important. So, the ACP, the acid phosphatase, is the enzyme that is useful in the investigation of rape cases. So, paano ito ginagawa? How is it done in laboratory? Okay? So, vaginal washings are examined for Seminal fluid ACP activity, okay? And that can persist up to 4 days from the time of rape, okay? So, again, vaginal washings are examined for seminal fluid ACP activity, which can persist up to 4 days, okay? So, frequently be elevated in bone disease and is associated with osteoclast. Okay, hindi kagaya ni ELP, that is osteoblast. Meron siyang C, class, okay, okay, class, char, okay, osteoclast, C, ACP, okay, osteoblast, ELP. Okay, yehe, slide 62 na tayo. Gamma glutamyl transferase, that is the enzyme involved in the transfer of gamma glutamyl residue from gamma glutamyl peptides to amino acid, water, and small peptides. Okay? Specific physiological function has not been clearly established. Okay? Tissue source, the kidney, sa brain. Okay? My brain pa ba? Okay? Is it functioning pa ba? Okay? Is it functioning well pa? I hope, guys. Hindi pa naman kayo nagpaprelim exam. Okay? So, primarily tissues of the kidney, brain, prostate, pancreas, and the liver. Clinical applications of ASI, however, are confirmed mainly to the evaluation of Liver and biliary system disorder. Okay? So, sa liver lang din siya and biliary system disorder, nagagamit. Okay? So, in virtually all hepatobiliary disorder, okay, again, hepato, it involves the liver and the biliary tract, making it one of the most sensitive enzyme assays for this condition. Higher elevations are in biliary tract obstruction. Okay? GGT levels will be increased in patients which is four times the upper lower, uh, upper limit normal, receiving enzyme-inducing drugs such as warfarin, phenobarbital, and phenytoin. Why, guys? 
because they are induced. The activity of GGT is induced. Okay? Kabaliktan ng inhibited. Diba? So, if that is induced, most likely the level will increase. So, si warfarin, phenobarbital, and phenytoin. Okay? So, the level of the GGT with the usage of these drugs, tataas siya. Okay? Higher elevation. Okay? Ito din si GGT para sa mga manginginom. It may indicate alcoholism. Elevations of in GGT may indicate alcoholism, particularly chronic alcoholism, yung mga matagal lang manginginom. Okay? Which is 2 to 3 times the upper limit normal. So, guys, okay, Another tip, para mas madaling mag-review, you associate this, okay, the different enzymes. So, pag nakakita kayo ng mga manginginom, okay, what enzyme is elevated, related to their alcoholism? Okay, that is GGT. Okay, how about if someone, okay, has Duchenne muscle, muscular dystrophy, CK, di ba? How about pag meron namang may Paget's disease? That is, Highest elevation, the ALT, but that's also elevated sa ACT. Okay? So, useful in monitoring the effects of abstention from alcohol and are used as such by alcohol treatment center. Okay? Can it, how can they use this to monitor the abstention? Okay? Yung pagtigil ng isang individual from alcohol consumption. Okay? Because the GGT level returns to normal within 2 to 3 weeks after stopping or after the cessation of alcohol consumption. But it will also uh, elev it will also increase in level again if the alcohol consumption is resumed. Pag bumalik sa pagiging kangininom. Okay? So, because of the susceptibility to enzyme induction, any interpretation must be done with drugs as well as with alcohol. Therefore, guys, it means that, okay, when the GGT is elevated, you have to correlate that with the drugs that is used by the patient or if the patient is alcoholic. Because, of course, uh, hindi natin to gagawin. We as medic, we don't do this one. We don't interpret results, right? But sooner, okay, soon, for ilang mga taon pa, okay, kung mga doktor na kayo, you can correlate the elevation of GGT, okay, with their usage of drugs as well as alcohol consumption. Kasi baka kung tumaas, okay, it may not be um, a presence, it may not indicate the presence of the disease, but... The elevation must be caused by the drugs they are using as well as their habits about drinking alcohol. So that's also elevated in acute pancreatitis, diabetes mellitus, and myocardial infarction. But then again, their clinical diagnostic significance is confined with hepatobiliary elevation. Diba? Okay, so we have here the um, ilan pa ba? Three more of the significant, okay? Because we, uh, there are other enzymes that we will not uh, dig deeper uh, on them, okay? So, we still have three major, the amylase, the lipase, and the G6PD. The amylase, okay? So, ito yung pinakamabilis, guys. Bakit pinakamabilis? Kasi yung bilis, no? Amylase char. Okay. So, ang hirap magpatawa pag mag-isa kang nagsasalita. Okay. Pero parang hindi lang din kayo maboring. Papakakorny na lang din ako. So, catalyze the breakdown of starch and the glycogen. So, that is its main function. Okay. That is also the smallest. Kaya nga siya pinakamabilis, diba? Kasi siya pinakamaliit. Pero joke lang yung pinakamabilis, guys. This is the smallest enzyme. Okay. Amylase. Okay, this is the smallest enzyme. Digestion of starches begins in the mouth with salivary amylase. But pancreatic amylase then performs the major, this digestive action of starch in the intestine. Therefore, there are two isoenzymes for amylase. The salivary and the pancreatic amylase. Okay? So, kung meron yan sa salivary at meron siya sa pancreas, 
Okay? Elevation, elevation of amylase is related to disorders in the um, salivary gland, okay, or in the oral cavity as well as in the pancreas. Tissue sores, as in our cells of the pancreas and the salivary glands, okay? So, sa pancreas and sa salivary. So, lesser concentration in skeletal muscle, small intestine, and the fallopian tube. Serum and urine amylase measurement is important in the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. Okay? However, this is non-specific. Bakit non-specific? Because this is also elevated in cases of salivary disorders. Okay? But the degree of elevation of amylase is helpful in the differential diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. So urinary amylase level, amylase clearance studies, amylase isoenzyme studies, and lipase measurement when used in conjunction with serum amylase increase the specificity of amylase measurement in the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. Amylase and lipase, they are important in the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis, guys. <sighs> In acute pancreatitis, serum amylase levels begin to rise in 5 to 8 hours, peak at 24, and normalize within 3 to 5 days. And the values range from 250 to 1,000 sumogi units. Okay? Sumogi units per DL, which is 2.55 times the upper limit of normal. Okay? For an individual who have normal level of amylase. So, diagnostic significance, elevated serum amylase level includes salivary gland lesions, kagaya ng pag may mumps and parotitis, and other intra-abdominal diseases, perforated peptic ulcer, intestinal obstruction, polycystitis, ruptured ectopic pregnancy, mesenteric infarction, acute appendicitis, renal insufficiency, and the diabetic ketoacidosis. Okay? In hyperamylacemia, okay, in hyperamylacemia, it occur in neoplastic diseases with elevated results as high as 50 times the upper limit normal, upper limit of normal, okay? So, this one, so guys, in Hyperamylacemia, it results when the amy molecule combines with immunoglobulin to form a complex that is too large to be filtered across the glomerulus. So if you remember, we also have the macro CK. Diba? The macro CK is a creatine kinase complex with immunoglobulin. Ganun din dito sa hyperamylacemia. An amylase is complex or combined with immunoglobulin. So, even if in in normal individual, okay, in normal individual, the amylase is excreted in the urine. Bakit siya na-excrete mam sa urine? Because it's very small. Okay, that's why it is easily filtered. And it is easily, um, it is easily filtered and it is excreted also in the urine. That's why, kung napansin nyo kanina, um, the levels of the amylase in the urine can be measured in conjunction with serum amylase to increase the specificity of amylase measurement. Okay? However, guys, what happens in persons with hyperamylacemia is that since the small enzyme, if, uh, since the amylase, which is a small enzyme, is complex with immunoglobulin, it is not Okay, it is not filtered by the glomerulus, hindi siya na excrete sa urine. So, what happens in that case? So, if it's not excreted, it's not filtered, what will happen? The level would accumulate in the peripheral circulation. So, kung mag-accumulate siya sa circulation, what will happen? It will increase. Okay, the level of the amylase increases in the circulation but the urinary excretion of amylase is abnormally low because it is not filtered 
from the it is not filtered by the glomerulus kaya hindi siya na excrete kaya mababa yung level ng amylase sa sayurin pero mataas siya sa cell okay so i hope that is clear guys amylase ay so enzyme the p type okay the pancreatic isoamylase and the salivary type isoamylase the p isoamylase is derived from the pancreatic tissue uh, tissue sorry and the S isoamylase is derived from the salivary gland, even sa fallopian tube and the lungs. Okay, lipase. Okay, eto naman yung enzyme na nagsusulat na to join. Char, lapis, ang corny. Shit. <laughs> sorry, sorry, nagmulato, nagmurato, sorry. Lipase catalyzes the partial hydrolysis of dietary tags in the intestine. To the two monoglyc to the two monoglyceride intermediate with the production of long chain fatty acid. Okay, we compare it with amylase. What is the main function of amylase? Hydrolysis of starch and glycogen. Si lipase naman hydrolysis of triglyceride. Tissue source sa pancreas found primarily in the pancreas, but that is also present in the stomach as well as in the small intestine. That's why, guys, okay, lipase is more specific to pancreas as compared kay amylase because there is no salivary involvement. Diagnostic significance that is confined almost exclusively to acute pancreatitis. So, it is mostly, okay, tested or requested in the clinical laboratory to assess acute pancreatitis. That is increased in 4 to 8 hours how about sa amylase? It rises within 5 to 8 hours. Okay, lipase peak at 24 hours and normalize at or it decrease within 8 to 14 days. How about si amylase, guys? So, si amylase, it returns to normal in 3 to 5 days. Ganun lang siya kabilis. Unlike for lipase, it persists for a longer period of time. Okay. So, it persists for a longer period of time. So, that is for lipase. So, more specific for pancreatic disorder. So, when we say more specific as compared, we are comparing it to the amylase. So, both amylase and lipase levels rise quickly. Okay, kasi diba, halos one hour lang difference nila. So, 5 to 8 kay amylase, 4 to 8 kay lipase yung uh Le when the levels begin to rise. So, but LPS elevations persist for approximately 8 days, diba? So, mataas siya ng um, 8 days from the onset of the disease. Unlike kay amylase elevation, it persists to 2 to 3 days. Ma'am, sabi mo kanina, 3 to 5 days. The 3 to 5 days, that is the level we're in, the level of the amylase normalize, okay? Nagiging normal lang siya. So, the amylase elevation nakikita yung elevation niya ng up to 3 days lamang. Okay? Pero 3 to 5 days, it returns to normal. Hindi kagaya ni LPS that it persists for approximately 8 days. In acute pancreatitis, diagnostic significance. So, aside from acute pancreatitis, it can be found in other intra-abdominal conditions but with less frequency then elevations of serum amylase. So, elevated and penetrating duodenal ulcers and perforated peptic ulcers, intestinal obstruction and acute cholecystitis. Parang same with um, amylase. Diba? Amylase would also increase in cholecystitis as well as in ulcers. Lipase levels are normal in conditions of salivary gland involvement. Okay, kaya nga mas specific siya for acute pancreatitis as compared to amylase. So, there are three isoenzymes, but the L2 is thought to be most clinically specific and sensitive. Okay, hey, G6PD na tayo. This is an oxidoreductase that catalyzes the oxidation of glucose 6-phosphate to 6-phosphogluconate or the corresponding lactone. Tissue sources of G6PD, the adrenal cortex, the spleen, the thymus, the lymph nodes, sa mga nagpapadede, okay? And the red blood cell, okay? However, its diagnostic significance is confined mainly in erythrocyte, okay? Red blood cell. Okay. Um, I hope 
guys, that you try to understand this one because this is important in our discussion later. In the red blood cell, it functions to maintain the NADPH in reduced form. Okay? So, si G6PD, minamaintain niya yung NADPH. Yan yung reduced form. Okay? Si NADPH. An adequate concentration of NADPH is required to regenerate sulfhydryl-containing proteins such as glutathione. Okay? So, from the oxidized to the reduced state. Glutathione, on the other hand, in the reduced form, what maintains glutathione in the reduced form? NADPH. Okay? What maintains NADPH in its, in its reduced form? The G6PD. G6PD maintains the adequate concentration of NADPH in reduced form. NADPH in reduced form, okay, maintains the glutathione to be in the reduced form. In turn, the glutathione in reduced form protects the hemoglobin by or from the oxidation of, by agents that may be present in the cell. So, babalikan natin yan namaya. Elevations of G6PD. Okay? So, that is also elevated in myocardial infarction as well as in megaloblastic anemia. So, no elevations are seen in hepatic disorder. Okay? G6PD levels, however, are not routinely performed as diagnostic aids in this condition. Okay, hindi siya talaga masyadong minimeasure. Okay, so decreased levels of G6PD, we have the G6PD deficiency. Okay, so from the, this, uh, from the name of the disorder or the disease, the level of the G6PD in that particular individual is very low. Okay? Mababa talaga yung level ng G6PD niya. A deficiency in G6PD results in an inadequate supply of an ADPH. Okay? Bakit guys? Because the G6PD maintains the concentration of the NADPH in reduced form. Diba? So, uh, and ultimately, in the inability to maintain reduced glutathione level. So, kung deficient, kasi deficient ang level of G6PD mo, most likely the level of NADPH is also low. And if the level of NADPH is low, okay, so it results to the inability to maintain the reduced level Reduced form of glutathione. Kasi nga, si NADPH, yung nagmamaintain na reduced form ni glutathione. Therefore, okay, when erythrocytes are exposed to oxidizing agent, hemolysis occur. Bakit nagkakaroon ng hemolysis pag may oxidizing agent? Because reduced glutathione help, okay, or helps in the deactivation of oxidizing agent. Because oxidizing agent at higher concentration is harmful to our red blood cell, resulting to hemolysis. So, it can result in several different clinical manifestations, kagaya na drug-induced hemolytic anemia. Okay? So, exposure of an individual with a G6PD deficiency to oxidant, kagaya ng primakin, that is, primakin, this is a drug for malaria. Okay? A malarial drug. So, they experience a hemolytic episode. The severity of the hemolysis is related to the drug concentration. This is most common in African Americans, but is in virtually every ethnic group. Okay? So, meron din naman tayo. We have a lot of cases in our country also, which is explained. Okay, so what are examples of oxidizing agents aside from primakine? Acetanilid, pure solidone isobutyl nitrate, nalitoxic acid, naphthalene, niridazole, and sulfa drugs. So, these are oxidizing agents. And careful attention must be uh, done when you are dealing with this, uh, with G6PD individuals. Kasi nga, these enzymes or these drugs can, could actually lead to their hemolytic episode. Aside from that, okay, so, kita nyo naman, di ba? Kung ano nang sinesearch ko para lang mas ma-explain sa inyo. We have here um, an illustration of G6PD deficiency in a child with the, which is a G6PD deficient and the consumption of fava beans. Okay? So, as you can see here, we have here the doctor. So, what did you eat? 
natin just two bean titas, two falafel sandwiches. And those sandwiches contains fava beans. Okay? Fava beans contains uh, oxidizing substances that can lead to hemolytic episode of an individual who has G6PD. Okay? So, who has G6PD? That's why fava beans, okay, is actually a threat for individual na deficient for G6PD. Kasi nga, it can cause hemolysis. Okay? Bakit kaya nagkakaroon ng hemolysis? So, we will explain it here. So, sabi dito, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency impairs the ability of an erythrocyte to form NADPH resulting in hemolysis. Okay? So, actually, guys, that statement is misleading because a G6PD individual, G6P, yes, the G6PD deficient individual, hemolysis will not occur unless they are exposed to oxidizing agent, okay? Even not only oxidizing agent as well as infection and fava beans, okay? So, bakit ano bang nangyayari if they are exposed to oxidant stress? So, in normal individual, okay, erase muna to guys, erase. In a normal individual, uh, with normal level of G6, uh, the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase or the G6PD, the G6PD, okay, maintains the level of the NADPH in reduced form. And this NADPH in reduced form maintains the level of glutathione in reduced state. Okay? So, the glutathione in reduced state, which is acted by glutathione peroxidase, they can inactivate, okay, oxidant, uh, oxidizing agent like this one, hydrogen peroxide, they can deactivate that to become a non-toxic substance to our body. Okay? So, na-deactivate yan to become water, which is not harmful to us. Diba? However, guys, if the G6PD is deficient, okay, kagaya ng individual who have low levels of G6PD, what happens is that, what happens is that, okay, so imagine that you don't have this chemical reaction, okay? So, since the G6PD is deficient, you cannot maintain a high number or high concentration of NADPH. In that case, glutathione will not also be maintained at reduced level. So, kung walang, if the glutathione is not in reduced level, it cannot, okay, it cannot inactivate the toxic hydrogen peroxide to become water molecule. So, kung wala yung G6PD, hindi mag-form or hindi ma-maintain yung reduced form ni glutathione, ano nang mangyayari? mag accumulate ngayon yung level ng hydrogen peroxide. So, without this or low level of this would lead to increased level of hydrogen peroxide if the individual is exposed to certain drugs, infection, and fava beans. So, ano mangyayari? High level of hydrogen peroxide will is actually toxic and harmful to the erythrocyte, to the red blood cell. So, what will happen if there is a high level of hydrogen peroxide in the circulation because of the presence or because an individual is exposed to drugs, infection in fava beans? Magkakaroon niya ng hemolysis. Okay? Therefore, guys, hemolysis will not occur without Okay, without this oxidant stress, for an individual who is uh, who have G6PD deficiency, normal pa din naman, they won't have hemolytic episode. Okay, the hemolytic episode will only occur if they are exposed to certain drugs, okay, infection and fava beans. So I hope guys that that is clear. Okay, same with this one. So ulitin natin. The G6PD maintains high levels of NAD, NADPH. The NADPH maintains reduced form of the glutathione. And the reduced form of glutathione converts toxic substances like 
hydrogen peroxide into water. However, if you do not have enough level of G6PD and a DPH is not maintained, okay, so the reduced glutathione is not also maintained. So kung wala rin reduced glutathione because, what, low, because of the low level of NADPH, what will happen? Okay, so the hydrogen peroxide will not be inactivated to become water. So what will happen? In that case of G6PD deficiency, accumulation of hydrogen peroxide occurs, which lead to hemoglobin denaturation and formations of Heinz bodies. So guys, in G6PD deficiency, that are expo uh, deficient individuals that are exposed to oxidant stress, um, they will have Heinz bodies in their RBC. Heinz bodies, these are RBC inclusion. So you will discuss more of that in your hematology as well as membrane lipid peroxidation and hemolytic anemia. So I hope guys, clear kung bakit nagkakaroon ng hemolytic episode sa G6PD individual because of um, their exposure to oxidant stress. Okay, other clinically significant enzymes, malapit na tayo, 5 nucleotidase, okay, so it is a marker of hepatobiliary disease and infiltrative lesion of the liver. So, in pseudocholinesterase that is secreted by the liver, it reflects synthetic function, okay, rather than hepatocyte injury. It catalyzes the removal of benzyl group from cocaine, therefore, it acts as an anti-xenobiotic enzyme. And it is a marker for insecticide or pesticide poisoning or organophosphate poisoning. Why, guys? Because insecticide or pesticide or organophosphate, they inhibit the level or they inhibit the action of pseudocholinesterase. Therefore, they are inhibitors. Insecticide, pesticide, organophosphate, those are inhibitors to pseudocholinesterase. So, if they are inhibitor, what will happen to the level of the enzyme pseudocholinesterase? Tataas ba o bababa? Ba? Decrease. Bababa ba? kasi it inhibits. Okay? If it induces, tataas yan. But since insecticide, pesticide, it inhibits the action of the pseudocholinesterase, its level, its level decreases in the presence of these inhibitors. I hope that is clear. Okay, so it is used to monitor the effect of muscle relaxants after surgery and that is involved in the metabolism of anticholinergic drugs. So tissue sores, liver, myocardium, and the pancreas that is decreased in acute hepatitis, cirrhosis, carcinoma, metastatic to liver, malnutrition, as well as in insecticide poisoning. So most of the time, the pseudocholinesterase is decreased, bumababa. Okay? So, pseudocholinesterase reflect acute to toxicity. Unlike si acetylcholinesterase, bakit siya pseudo? Kumbaga, that is a false cholinesterase. This is the acetylcholinesterase that is the true cholinesterase. So, the true cholinesterase or cholinesterase from the red blood cell better reflect chronic exposure. Okay, acute toxicity, si pseudo, chronic exposure kay acetylcholinesterase. So, is Angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay? So that is a possible indicator of neuronal dysfunction, Alzheimer disease. And that is, what else? Never mind this one. It has a diagnostic significance for the diagnosis of monitoring psychoidosis. I mean by psychoidosis, guys. So you have to check that. Check it out. Increase, that is increased. Increased levels of ACE seen in sarcoid sarcoidosis, multiple sclerosis, ano din ang multiple sclerosis, ano Addison's disease. Okay, that is acute, that must be acute. Are you cute? Char. Acute and chronic bronchitis, HIV infection, and leprosy. Last, though this is not a enzyme, an enzyme. Seruloplasmin, seraulo. Okay. So, guys, nakakasira ulo yung ginagawa natin. Diba? So, ceruloplasmin, that is a copper-carrying protein, and it's also a design. Okay? But, most likely, this is a transporter. 
it um when it comes to function it is not more of an insert but more of transporter guys okay so what does it it transfer si copper okay therefore it is a marker for wilson's disease so assignment but i believe i discussed this already in herbal chemistry okay you read on wilson's disease and the level of ceruloplasmin tataas ba siya or bababa and what is wilson's disease okay uh, what is this disorder and what is the level of ceruloplasmin in this disorder another another assignment okay so uh, hindi na, uh, you don't need to pass this one but i will definitely i will include them in your quiz in hemolysis, okay, you also check for the level of haptoglobin. Okay, Wilson's disease, you check for it, the definition, what is this disorder, and what's the level of ceruloplasmin. And bakit yun yung level ng ceruloplasmin? Kung mataas siya, bakit mataas? And kung mababa, bakit mababa? And for hemolysis, intravascular hemolysis, what is the level of haptoglobin? Okay, is it increase or decrease? And bakit siya increase or decrease? Okay, you have to know why is it increase or decrease. Okay, and that's all. That's all for our discussion, guys. So I hope you learned a lot in our discussion for enzymes of clinical significance. It really, it really took me a, uh, so much time to to have our discussion or for this discussion. Because I have to outline the book, aside from that, I have to place that in PowerPoint presentation, okay? Na super short, kasi even if you check your book, sobrang haba nito, okay? So, dapat niya, it will take us two weeks. However, um, we still have so many topics to discuss, and I really want to finish the syllabus for your sake, okay? Para naman marami naman kayong alam. Ba? So, again, you have to summarize this one and submit a copy of your output in our LMS. So, God bless everyone. I hope nakakatulong yung mga corning jokes. Okay? Uh, para man lang hindi sobrang seryoso. And aside from that, yung mga picture as well as the discussion, yung mga mnemonic, sana man makatulong. Okay? So, bye-bye! See you! Or hear me again for our next discussion about trace elements next week.